my name's Catherine and I'm one of the wetland bird keepers here at Jersey Zoo. So today I will be taking you through some of our bird enclosures uh, as well as a little bit behind the scenes in our incubation room that's within the bird department. Um, so at the moment we have around 600 individual birds here so that's a lot of breeding activity that's going to happen over the next few months which is really exciting. So yeah we're doing lots of preparation at the moment to gear up for it. So yeah I will take you now into the incubation room. Cool, so welcome to our incubation room. So as you can see here, we've got our brooders and our incubators. So sometimes we have to pull the eggs, artificially incubate them in incubators like this, um, or um, pull chicks to hand rear them, so we'll keep them in brooders like this. And obviously it's, it's better if we leave the parents do it, so when we can, we um, let them parent rear, but sometimes we do have to hand rear, which is really exciting for us. Um, because especially as if we have a new species and we get to see them grow and develop, um, it can be really cool. And we even go to lengths of wearing things like this sometimes, <laughs> this helmet, um, or wearing stuff like full um, cloaked robes to kind of mask our human form so that they don't imprint on us. Um, and so in here as well we do things like take measurements of all the eggs, and here we, I have been um, fixing this red tail egg, so if they have little cracks in it sometimes, you have to use this glue, and you can use a technique called candling um, with a torch and see exactly where the cracks are, and then you can actually use glue to fix them, which is really cool. Um, and if it gets even worse, you can use little strips of paper and stuff like that, so yeah, it's really interesting. Um, but now, um, candling you can also use to, it's basically shining a light through an egg, to check for fertility of the egg and to like periodically check for the growth and development so you can see how the egg's going, which is really cool. So now in here, I actually have two Java and Green magpie eggs, which is really exciting. They're a really rare bird. There's actually only about 100 of them in the wild and the same in captivity. And um, you might have seen them around the park. They're this really bright green color and they're really noisy. They're a really nice display bird. Um, so hopefully these will be fertile, but they're only a few days old, so it usually takes at least about three days for you to see any signs of uh, fertility. But we're going to try now just so I can show you the candling, um, and hopefully we will see something. So here we have the two eggs, and they're marked with an X and a dot, um, and that's just for when we turn the eggs. We turn them an odd times a day to help with their development and the X just means um, to turn towards me. So we will turn them in a minute after we do the candling. So I just need to turn the light off to do this. So I'm going to very carefully pick up one of these. You can kind of see inside the egg. Yeah, so at the moment it's pretty clear, but hopefully we will come back in a few days and check and then there's also a pink pigeon egg which I will do the same thing um, and that too is clear at the moment but yeah it's really cool when they're there are fertile you get to see in the first days this tiny little um, heartbeat which is really cool cool so I'll just turn the lights back on and put the lid back on the incubator and then now I'm just going to show you some of the array of eggs we have in here. So I've just put out a, a little display of some of the eggs we have here. And for example, this is a flamingo egg. So it's, it's really like chalky texture. And, and this just means it's from the female EC um, because we have rings on all of, the, all of them with, the, with their own different letters on it. This looks like a ping pong ball, but it's actually not. It's a Chirico egg. Um, and then you have everything up to the really tiny ones, um, especially this little egg is one of my favourites. It's an Omechan Leocicla egg. Now we're going to go down to the Ibis Avery where I'm going to show you some of our Northern Bald Ibis um, and talk about their nesting behaviour down there. So I'll take you into the Northern Bald Ibis Avery now where I will talk a little bit about their nesting behaviours and give out some nesting material. So 
So these are our lovely northern bald ibis. A lot of people think they're quite ugly, but I think they're rather lovely. Um, especially this, their like, purple green sheen they have to their plumage, it's amazing. And the funny noises they make. So these guys are actually, in, in, they've been downlisted to endangered, but they still face a lot of threats in the wild. Like a lot of birds do, such as habitat loss, climate change, hunting, uh, as well as pesticide use actually had a really detrimental impact on their breeding success for quite a few years. So there's actually about 600 um, or aroundabouts that in Morocco and a kind of semi-wild population in Turkey of about 100. So there's not a huge amount in the wild, but there is a huge captive population of around 1,500 birds, which is really cool. And this is really a really important safety net population uh, with the aim of future releases to help restore the, this species uh, back into the wild uh, where they used to be found. So our birds will soon start to be nest building uh, up on this ledge there where they build their nest and they have about two to four eggs in their clutch and this mimics where they naturally nest in the wild and they have actually been observed to share uh, nesting cliff sites with the red-billed chuff which we actually have opposite us over there and other species that we release on the north coast in Jersey. So here I have a few examples of some nesting material that we give out to our birds. So this is unwound wool and coconut fibre which we give to our passerine birds uh, which includes all the songbirds and then we give out twigs to uh, dove and pigeon species and then the larger twigs are for these northern bald ibis so I'm just gonna scatter a few of these now and then hopefully later they will come down and pick the twigs they like and start building their nest with it. Cool so now I will take you to Corindy Walkthrough Avery where I will show you some nests we have there and some of the breeding activity going on. So this is our Corindy Walkthrough Avery, which is one of our really popular walkthrough um, exhibits with all of our Madagascan and African birds in. Um, so I'll talk to you now and show you some nests that we have in here. So welcome to Corindy. I have some insects here that I'm just going to do a little scatter feed for them, give them their lunch. And then we'll see who comes down, probably the usual culprits. They absolutely love mealworms, morios and crickets. So yeah, here we have uh, Madagascar crested, crested ibis and a hammercock, which is this really cool pterodactyl kind of looking bird here. Um, they're actually really unique. They're the only member of their taxonomic family and genus, so that's really cool. Um, so in here at the moment, I'm just going to show you, talk to you a bit about some of the nests um, and some of the, the artificial nests that we provide them. At the moment, we have a Madagascar Fodi that's nesting just up here. They kind of build really dome-like nests uh, with a ch chamber in the middle. Um, and they're an example of a smaller bird building a more intricate nest. Um, and then we have uh, birds that build really big nests like our hammercops, they actually build the biggest nests in Africa uh, and it can be so substantial that it can actually support human weight and they love designing it and adding on to it and they'll have the same nest for years. So the nest you can see up there belongs to the Madagascar Fodi which are the small passerine birds uh, and the females are the olivey browny colour and the males are actually just coming into their red plumage, breeding, breeding plumage now, um, which and they're, we have a lot of them just perched up there. Oh, and now I'll just show you some of the nest platforms and um, boxes that we can provide them as well. So some of our birds, we provide these artificial nest boxes. This is an example of one we give to a shama, and this is one we give as a favourite of a pygmy goose. And then our pigeons, as I'm sure of you, you've all seen wild pigeons, how kind of worryingly minimalistic some of their nests are sometimes. So we actually give um, these platforms to our pink pigeons and they're specifically measured and designed for the pink pigeons and made by our lovely maintenance team. So now I'll just show you our hammercock nest. So before they were nesting up there um, and they had their main nest, it was really big, but unfortunately it came down in the storm. So now they have just started building again right over here. It's not as big as it could be and I'm sure they will add to it more and more um, over the next few weeks. 
Um, but you can see it up there and they've just, they add all sorts to it and they will continue building and there'll be a really nice central chamber in the middle of it with the entrance on the side, with a little tunnel into the chamber and they will keep adding more and more stuff. They even like adding anything they can find around the aviary. We've even found like sunglasses and uh, a fork in there before. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So now I've shown you some nests, we're gonna go down to the flock of Chilean flamingos and see what they're up to. Okay, so I thought I'd finish up by showing you our lovely flamboyant of flamingos. Um, they are definitely one of my favorites as well as the, as the red-breasted geese that share the enclosure with them. So obviously, Easter is all about eggs and chicks and I'm sorry I haven't been able to show you any chicks because it's a bit early for all our birds at the moment but hopefully over the next few months you may see some see these guys um, start making nests which they create these little nest mounds that you can see in the background uh, we provide them with uh, black sand and topsoil and gravel and they basically make them themselves and then lay a chalky white egg on top of it like the one I showed, uh, showed you earlier so recently I've been seeing them doing their courtship displays, which is basically a series of synchronised displays they do together, um, such as the head turning and the wing salutes that you might see them do, which basically comes before all of their breeding and their nesting. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, I'm really excited. Hopefully they'll have babies this year because they, they haven't had any for a few years now. The last ones we had, uh, you can see this, their heads are still a little grey. There's about seven of them that were hatched at the end of 2018. Um, so, and it's usual for them to have a, a break in their breeding. So they'll kind of all, well, they'll breed together and then they'll have a few years where they don't breed at all. Uh, so hopefully, because it's been a few years, we're gonna see some babies this year. So our oldest flamingos here are actually at least 56 years old, um, which is really cool. There's about a group of 11 of them that were wild caught from South America back in 1965. So all that we know that is they're at least 56, so they could be a lot older than that. Uh, and it was actually Gerald Durrell himself that went out and helped catch them. Thank you for joining me today and meeting some of our lovely birds here at the bird department. I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual day at the zoo.